Hi guys, it's me, Susan. Welcome to Cruising with Susan. And today is uh, Sunday, January the 10th. And some of you will be happy to remind me, I'm sure the next time you see me, that I said I was going to do this post a week ago. And that's just, if you enjoy keeping up with, with my mistakes that much, you are welcome to it. I'm trying. I'm trying to keep less track of my mistakes these days. And uh, uh, interestingly, that's part of the topic I want to talk about today, which is how to make the right decision. Um, and the first thing I'm going to say to you is that that was really a, that was kind of an attention grabbing title that I wanted to put on it. Because in fact, in fact, I'm sorry, I just, I just caught a glimpse of these, these, <laughs> these lines. These lines here. So I'm not supposed to care anymore. <laughs> Jolie is here too. I don't know. You probably won't get to see her because she's way down here. Um, <laughs> fortunately, I'm doing this on my new little uh, iPad mini. Um, so it's fortunate and unfortunate because to look, to not be looking off, to not appear in the, in the video like I'm looking off into some other direction, I can't look at myself. I have to look at the, where the, uh, shutter is on the on the camera which is far removed from the middle of the thing where my face is so if you see me every now and then my eyes sort of wander off to this side it's because it's because I have to check and see if there's some some uh, something hanging out of one of my teeth or something like that which I should have checked before anyway I'm sorry I got distracted on those little those little furrows in between my and they don't go away when I laugh. So then they're going to have to, I'm stuck with them because I plan to laugh a lot. Anyway, okay, did I say this already? There is no such thing as a right decision. There's only, um, I would call it even your best guess. Um, you can make a decision that you feel 100% certain is the right decision. And I'm not saying it, it won't turn out to be satisfying and you'd be glad that you did it, but it could equally turn out differently. I think we have expectations when we make a decision, and sometimes those expectations uh, set us up for disappointment um, because things have a way of changing on us. Uh, we cannot control outcomes as much as we like to. We can try to influence them as much as we want. Um, but the fact that you make a decision, and even if you, it's a decision you're 100% certain about, um, it may very well turn out later on that you think, gee, I wonder what would have happened if I had made another decision. That's almost part of the human condition. We wish we could be certain, and then when we look back, we wonder. That's just our, that's just our destiny, I guess. But anyway, here's what I think about decisions. Uh, what trips us up is the thought of there's the right decision, and then there's the wrong decision. Or there's a good decision and a bad decision. Or black and white. We tend to do this um, kind of binary thinking where it's either or. And uh, the problem is that most decisions in our real lives are not that simple. Otherwise, we wouldn't, be, we wouldn't have any issues with making decisions. And yet a lot of people have trouble with that. Um, the, the way I like to think about a decision is almost like I have a committee. I have on the one hand, and I have on the other hand, these are two members, two members of the committee, and then I have the chairman of the committee, which is me, okay? So in thinking about a decision, like a committee making a decision, I want to listen fully to my committee members, even if uh, they totally disagree with each other, especially if they do, um, but even if, you know, I feel fairly certain that one decision is probably better than another, I want to be open and encourage all the input that I can have. Now, my internal committee is my own thoughts, either or, pro and con. And um, each one of those committee members should present all the facts that it possibly has, all the reasons that in favor of a decision. And then the other side presents all the reasons opposed to the decision. Sometimes it's as simple as just writing those things down on a list and seeing which list is longer. 
but often it's not quite that simple because each one of those pros and cons has a little bit of emotion, our emotions or our wishes or our fears attached to them. But at least it will give you a chance to make something that appears to be a little bit more objective, what we might call an informed decision, where you know that there are um, reasons for and against, and you're not denying those, you're not trying to just justify the decision that you really want to make, the one that feels best to you. It'd be, it's occurring to me now, it'd be kind of like, I wanna eat something and I don't wanna gain weight. So as I analyze the, uh, the decision, I might find myself thinking, well, that doesn't really count. Like food, <laughs> food, food eaten when you're standing up doesn't count. Or food that you eat while you're preparing a meal doesn't count, even though you could have eaten almost the equivalent of a full meal. Some kind of, some kind of magical thinking that we have that really just supports, you know, I really want to eat that thing, okay? And denies the fact that, you know, there are consequences to that. But I think the best decisions that you make, and one I often find uh, uh, works with me, is I listen fully to both sides, including the, here are the consequences, here are the likely consequences, there could be others I don't even know about, and here are the rewards, here are the things that I want, and here are the things that might happen that I don't want. Um, in Alcoholics Anonymous, I think they call it thinking through the drink. You don't just think, gee, I want a drink. You think, okay, do I want the drink and everything that might follow from that drink? Back to the weight gain analogy. I want the food, do I want the possibility of weight gain? And even those things can be broken down more and more. Um, but the point is, even if it's a small decision, what time should I go to the grocery store today? Or it's a huge decision, should I get a divorce? Should I quit my job? Where do I wanna to go to college? What do I wanna do when I retire? Um, those decisions as well can be broken down or thought of objectively as with pros and cons. And the reason why I suggest that is because ultimately we are deluded if we think that a decision, the right decision, is going to turn out exactly the way we hope it will. So the more objective you can be, the more prepared you are when things happen after your decision that you hadn't uh, counted on. Um, the pros and cons of getting a divorce. Obviously, there are, there are uh, a million of those. But if you've thought about it, if you've imagined, can I live with that? Here's a, here's a con. I will have to disrupt my family. I will have to um, have a lot of expenses that I don't have now. I will have to be alone for at least a while. Um, uh, if, you've really, if you've really worked through those lists, both the pros and the cons, then when you make a decision, it will be, I have chosen this, not I'm trapped because I don't, I don't have enough money to get a divorce. That will be one of the, one of the uh, items that you evaluated. And so you decided I'm not getting a divorce be because of this reason. Um, of course, you may end up getting one for reasons you haven't even, <laughs> you haven't even encountered yet. But the point is that we don't set ourselves up for some kind of wish that if we just think about it enough, we will come up with a decision that guarantees that we won't ever uh, have a problem with the decision that we finally make. Okay, and I wanted to add one more thing that I uh, actually used just today or yesterday in making a decision. I was deciding about whether to... Um, uh, some of you know I have, uh, I, I attempt to play the banjo and I've been trying to practice more and trying to work on my, my uh, what would I call it, a stage fright, performance anxiety. Um, <laughs> I read a, yesterday a term for the same thing called evaluation apprehension. <laughs> okay, I think, I think stage fright is probably a little easier to say. But anyway, so I have an opportunity to play in a jam with other people. It is a beginner intermediate jam, so it's not like they would they would be offended if somebody that wasn't that good was there. There are plenty of people that are just beginners. But it happens to take place in Austin. It uh, it it takes a long time to well it's it's 
it's well over an hour. It took me yesterday an hour and a half. Anyway, so the, and I was also, but uh, the, I was doing the pros and cons thing, and I really felt like I wanted to go. Um, it's a very I've been there before, and they're extremely welcoming, supportive people, but I found myself starting to make excuses like I had too much to do, which is not true. I mean, I had plenty of things to do. I can always find plenty of things to do. But I think it was, I was trying to come up with a decision not to go. So I looked at that a little bit more and I realized I was afraid because of the previously mentioned stage fright and uh, performance anxiety. And I didn't want to make a fool of myself. The, the fact that these people uh, are the last people in the world who would judge me is irrelevant. It was my own fear. So when I realized that, I was very excited because I, I have decided to try to not make decisions that are motivated by fear. Um, because my uh, life is too short to do that. If my fear, it's not a fear like, should I jump off this cliff and my fear is that I might be killed. It's a fear, should I go to this, this gathering and make myself vulnerable to being judged? And I was afraid. And as soon as I figured that out, I decided it was very clear I needed to go because I imagined staying home and realizing that I could have gone and realizing that I was just afraid and I chickened out and then kind of being miserable about that. So um, I think that uh, in addition to pros and cons, if you, can, if you can isolate that there may be some fear or anxiety driving your decision, or you're making you lean one way or another. It doesn't mean you should ignore the fear. It just means really take it into account and really try to ask yourself, is this fear worth um, not having this experience or not going forward with, a, with a, a plan that makes a lot of sense in a lot of other ways? Okay, so um, hopefully that can, uh, can help you in making some of your, uh, your own decisions. And uh, the most important part, though, of course, is to remember that we have no way of controlling outcomes. You can think about a decision for hours and hours and hours, and some people do that. They're, they're up all night. They can't sleep. Their mind is racing back and forth, back and forth, as if finally I will come to the one that will be right. Um, and if you can accept that it's just going to be the lesser of evils, maybe, or it's going to be maybe lead you in a direction that you will then find out other things. But uh, please stop believing that there that there's a right decision. That will take a lot of the pressure off and maybe allow you to take a few more uh, risks in life, which calculated risks uh, make a lot of sense and they uh, sometimes open you up to really exciting new experiences. Okay, so that's my story. I'm sticking to it. And I uh, wish you all uh, the best as we move into 2016. I hope you all considered my, my suggestion last week to just pick one thing. I find my mind continuing to think of many things and then just saying, whoa, Nelly, <laughs> slow down. And uh, actually what I'm ending up doing is what thing right now do I want to work on? I'm not even having, I'm not even picking one thing that I have to work on. I'm just working whatever I'm on at the moment. And that's kind of flowing for me in a nice way. So just another option. Okay. So in the meantime, until the next time I talk to you, I am off to my, uh, to my equine, uh, learning workshop next, uh, next this week, actually Thursday. And uh, I'll tell you all about that when I get back. And in the meantime, please remember to live well, laugh often and love much. And I'll see you next time on Cruising with Susan. Bye.